Hello there, as part of the new and updated Metal Gear Online 1 setup guide, I'm going to go through the process in full just as one tech video, just to go through each individual step and clarify some of the settings and why they are the way they are, considering that Metal Gear Online 1 in particular has quite a few networking quirks which kind of hold it back from being as accessible, specifically just the host. But to jump into games immediately, this will get you into the game amazingly fast. So I have downloaded the pre-configuration file, which is this WinRAR archive. If you aren't, aren't, aren't able to extract this, uh, WinRAR or tools like 7-Zip are really, really useful and will let you just right-click on this and extract the file directly. It takes just a few seconds for it to unpack. And by default, the BIOS folder and the ISO folder will be empty. Because BIOS files and the game files are copyright uh, infringing material, and I'm not able to share those directly. But I do have my own BIOS files for my own PlayStation 2s here. I'm going to show you just where exactly to copy those in. So it's going to go into the folder for the game, or the emulator, go to the BIOS folder, and copy them directly here. And this is the default directory for the portable version of PCSX2 is just the BIOS folder and its own directory. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the back of the game I've got. It's going to copy it into the ISO folder. Now, this isn't the default directory of PCSX2 normally, but in this portable version, this is the default folder for your game directory. So if you ever want to change that directory, it can be easily done within the emulator. I'm going to boot the emulator. So it's going to tell you that it can't find any games here. There are two options, which is to change the directory. Maybe to look for a directory of your own game backups you already have. Or to scan the directory for the ISO folder for what's in there. So I'm going to hit the scan for new games button. That's odd. Let me just change the directory, see if it's working. ISO folder, select folder, and just gonna let that run. So, it's now found the game. So, the specific version of Metal Gear Online 1, or rather, Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence Disc 2, and the disc is uh, subtitled uh, Persistence, it has to be this slus code of 21243. That's the most compatible version of the game of the online play. Other versions can work, but have been known to exhibit different problems. So this setup guide will assume you're using this version of the game, which is the North American release. So the most important part of Metal Online 1 setup is going to be the network and HDD menu. And by default, it's going to be set to PCAP Bridged for Ethernet. Now, PCAP Bridged is the option you'll need to use if you wish to host. If you're having issues uh, getting the game to connect to the network, I'd recommend using the sockets instead. So we're going to keep it on PCAP Bridge, and I'm going to set it to Ethernet. Now, this, these settings for your Ethernet device will vary depending on your, your own computer. For instance, uh, these VPN and other network adapters are specific to my computer. So this will be different on your own system. So you may need to change this drop down to, to suit what you're using. But generally, if you look at your own network settings, you can see that your network status here will tell you the name of the adapter you're using. So for instance, I'm using the Ethernet adapter which matches the adapter here in the settings. I have intercept DHCP enabled, and there's a specific reason for this. This lets you host games, because it, it assigns this IP as the IP for PCSX2, allowing you to port forward it. If you don't wish to host, then you can disable the setting, or you can simply change the option to sockets. And for troubleshooting purposes, I'd recommend that if you aren't able to connect using the settings, is to use the sockets version instead. 
Now, the only other menu I recommend using in the pre-configuration, if you're not familiar with PCA62, is the graphics tab. By default, it's going to be using a widescreen patch, and it's going to be set to, to use widescreen in borderless full screen. Uh, you can change these depending on your own personal preference, but these are the defaults. In the rendering tab, I have the internal resolution set to 1080p. If your computer is weaker, you want to lower this setting. If your PC is much more powerful, you can raise this. I have seen though, once you start going above 4K, the more players you have in a room, you're going to have difficulty going at full performance. So I'd maybe recommend keeping this maybe as high as 2K if you've got a very good computer, but this will depend on your own personal system. The rest of these settings are set to their defaults. There is an optional uh, texture pack in here as well. If you want to use the reworked textures, you can just tick the load textures feature here. But if you don't wish to use them, once you use the game's vanilla textures, just leave that unchecked. I'm just going to put the game here, just to show how to actually connect once you're in-game, and also show how to troubleshoot the networking connections area. And they're going to enable fast-forward just to get through the opening credits. Okay, so you hit online mode. There'll be a bit of a black screen as it starts to load another part of the game's memory since the online mode is separate from everything else. So getting a black screen here is normal. We're going to load the game settings. And I'm going to select play with detailed settings. I'm going to hit network settings. So from here, this is the port the game will use. So if you wish to host, this is the port you'll need to port forward. This usually is from 5730 to 5739. You can change the value slightly, but I recommend this range. I personally use 33 because if you host on Metal Gear Online 2, it uses the same port range and you might already be using 30 and it's have that assigned to a different IP. And depending on your router, you may want to use different ports for different individual instances. So I'm going to set mine to 33, because that's what my router has set the port forward. But you can use 30, 31, 32, etc. all the way to 39, and that's the expected range of the game. So I'm going to set the port I wish to use, and I'm going to hit OK without changing any other settings. I'm going to hit Connect the Network. I'm going to accept the terms and conditions. And the pre-configuration will have this network config called MG01. If you don't have this, then you may not have downloaded the pre-config or it may have been a corrupted download. So just make sure you have this uh, network config file. We're going to hit yes on this and let's start connecting. So there's two parts of the connection process. There's the DNAS section and then there's a UDP check. If the DNAS check fails, that means that your cheat file isn't working. If the UDP check fails, that means that there might be a networking-based issue, and I'm going to show you how to resolve that in a moment. But from here, we're going to accept the terms and conditions. We're going to choose some account list. And we're going to make a new account by hitting here. So this is how you create an account for Melgar Online 1. So, for instance, if you type into the field using your controller, and this will be your account name, and this will be your in game player name. I recommend uh, taking a note of this information somewhere, just in, need, in case you need to log back in. Once you save an account, if you load into a new instance of the game and it, your account isn't on this list, you can enter your information here to log into an existing account. But if you want to make a new account, you choose the account list and choose new account. And I'm going to use one I created earlier for testing purposes. And I'm going to log in.
And if you get this far in the process, in fact, if you get to the Terms and Conditions page, you're already connected to the server. Getting as far as the lobby screen, if you haven't got any error message about being unable to host, you should also be able to host. If you're unable to host, then the Create Game field will be greyed out. And from here, you're able to join games.